Hey, this is Audrey from Travels with Audrey with some more advice about packing. Something that everybody likes to share with you as to their best tips on how to pack. Well, as a tour manager for many years, I think I've come up with a system that I can kind of share with you. Uh, you can also take a look at my Facebook page and my blog. I do have uh, some posts with a little bit more information, more in depth for you, but I just want to kind of give you some general ideas. First of all, traveling to Italy, it depends on what time of the year you go. So, but I always recommend traveling in layers. So if it's a really hot day, you can actually take your shirt off, you can take off your jacket and have a tank top on. Or if it's a cool evening, you have a light sweater or a jacket that you can wear. If it's a rainy day, because sometimes in the summertime we do get those showers uh, that don't last very long, but we do get them, uh, a rain jacket an umbrella, preferably the shorter one so you can kind of hold them in the hand or put them in your purse. Uh, you can dress to not look like a tourist, more like a traveler, that you can do. And for that I would always recommend that you travel with one or two different base colors. You can dress it up with a piece of jewelry, dress it up with a beautiful scarf. Very important would be a hat for sun because it does get very, very hot in Italy. People forget that. It's actually getting hotter as the years go by. So very important to be comfortable. In Italy, women and men do not wear shorts, do not wear flip-flops. That is considered beachwear. Another thing is women do not wear very short mini skirts. They do not try to show that much skin. Those are just a couple of tips for you. But again, like I said, the most important thing for you is to be comfortable. Another thing is when you're traveling in Italy, one of the places that you're going to be visiting a lot are churches because they have some of the most important art on display. They're also a great little respite for the middle of the day because people are not in there. It's relatively quiet and it's also cooler. Show some respect, a sign of respect when you're entering a religious um, building like a church in Italy. So. For that, when you're packing, please keep that in mind. So for my guests, what I recommend is that you have a shawl or a scarf. So if you're wearing a tank top while you're out and about on your walking tour and we're going to be entering a church, you can cover your shoulders with that because otherwise they will provide you with one, which is not very nice. And sometimes they'll even charge you for it. Uh, so please keep that in mind. Also, so basically your shoulders need to be covered as you enter a church and your knees need to be covered. So gentlemen, yes, I was asked this question once, a golf short uh, for a man usually comes at about the knee area, that would be fine. And for a woman, I usually recommend a skirt or a capri, but again, please remember that the hemline has to be at the knee. Also, for packing, very important, is your purse for the ladies. Um, I recommend several type. Very important because of the pickpockets, we do not want to have any bad experiences and luckily on none of my tours did I ever have anybody or any of my guests ever uh, succumb to a pickpocket. So this is what we call a over the body or cross body purse. There are many different styles. So you swing it over like this and you have this part in front of you so that your wallet and all that you need is right here in front of you, your passport and all your documentation that is necessary to have with you for the day. And then you can have a separate little bag if you have a camera. So this not only will give you freedom of walking around and enjoying your tour and what you're visiting and sightseeing, but it will also give you peace of mind and it will be less possible for uh, pickpockets to get this from you. Now, of course, men, very important, please do not put your wallet on the back pocket or in the front pocket because believe it or not, you can be pickpocket, pickpocketed on your front pocket as well. So for men, it's a little bit more difficult to give advice, but what I recommend is usually a money belt for the gentleman. Uh, that would be the easiest thing. There are many different um, options for across the body bags. This one is one of my favorites. Um, this one I purchased here in a local store and you can I'm sure purchase this yourself. This has a wire mesh right through here. So there's a wire mesh here and there's a wire mesh here. So if somebody were to come by with a knife and wanted to actually cut my purse because they're not interested in hurting you by the way, they're only interested in your money and your electronics. So they're going to cut your purse and then you know they can take it. This will not be able to be cut. And also the strap, there is a metal wire actually that runs all along it. So even if they wanted to cut the strap, that would not be possible. And then I have a little bit of an extra hook here. So when I zip up my purse, I have an actual way to close it with an extra clip. 
So this gives you extra peace of mind. And again, this is a cross body. Also, when you're traveling, because on our tours, we do restrict the size of your luggage because on our buses and our vans, there's limited space. So what I usually do is I stick one of these in my purse because I'm sure some of you will want to go shopping. I do. <laughs> so what I do is I stick this in my suitcase and at the end of my trip, if I want an extra bag because I've done too much shopping, you know, you open this up and then it becomes a big bag that I can open up and make even deeper and look at all the space I have in here to put all my goodies that I bought in Italy. So I recommend that you buy one of these that can, is foldable and you can put this in your suitcase to put all your extra purchases in there. On a number of our tours uh, in Italy as well as in France, uh, we will be traveling on the train. So this is going to be important information for you. you. First of all, there's very little storage space and you're not going to be the only one traveling on that train. In the summertime especially, the trains are going to be full and there's limited space for your luggage. So if you're trying to put your suitcase on the over rack, on the, on the rack above you, they're very narrow, so they do not accommodate large suitcases. And do not always rely on help because there may not be somebody there to help you. Also, there are racks at the front of the uh, train wagons as you come in, the train cars. There, yes, you can put your suitcase, but again, it's away from your eye, so more possibilities of theft, somebody taking your suitcase and running away with it. And also, you don't always have the space there because there are many other visitors like you, travelers, who would like to put their suitcases there. So if you're first on the train, you're lucky. If you're the third or fourth stop down the line, then you're not going to be so lucky. Also, if you're looking for help, yes, you may find the good Samaritan or the good visitor who's going to help you, but you have to remember that this is a great way to have access to you as a person and to be able to run away with your suitcase. Now, I will be able to know the difference because I know Italy and I've traveled extensively throughout Europe, so I know the difference between somebody who's going to be a good Samaritan from one that's going to try and rob me from my suitcase. So the way I do it when I travel by train as a tour manager, I have, this is my, my, my carry-on basically. So when I travel with this, I can roll it. If I'm going from one hotel to another or in the airport, I have all my paperwork, my computer, my camera, some bathroom items in there, one change of clothes. All my important information is in this. But this goes on my back, it goes on a backpack. So I can roll it or I can use it as a backpack. I'm going to take my over the body purse. I'm gonna sling it over like this. And then I have my suitcase. And my suitcase is actually not a very big one. It lasts me for eight, nine days, and then I go do my laundry. And then I can roll that and I can pick it up as I'm getting on off the train. So I still have hands free. I have my purse here at the front of me with all my important documentation. I have my backpack with everything else of importance. And then I have my suitcase. Very easy at this point to get, an on, get on and off the train. I have a hand so that I can hold myself to hoof that suitcase up onto the train because the steps are quite high. So that is my advice for packing. It's easy to contact me. You can check out my website, send me an email or give me a call. I'd love to chat with you.